Hey y'all, Natalie here today, and we are celebrating Rebecca Lockhart's 1500 subscribers on YouTube. I picked this fun grid layout over here on the right to scrap lift from her Instagram feed. And I am doing some spring um, Easter egg, Easter bunny photos of my kids from last year. So I picked um, that blue paper is I think from Studio Calico and the pink floral is from Pink Fresh Studio. I have three square photos here and I have already backed them in white cardstock. And now I'm pulled out these little two by two paper pads from Paige Evans. I think this is Horizons. Yeah, the Horizons collection. So one of the paper pads is only icons and one or pattern paper. And the other pad is um, like words, icons with words or sayings or something like that. So I like a good mix. I don't like too many words because I don't want mm, my reader's attention to be torn between multiple sets of reading on a page, if that makes sense. So um, I'm pulling out, let's see, I have three photos. So I'm pulling out six other squares from these paper pads to include in my grid. Sorry if you hear background noise, that's my dog. Whenever I start talking, she thinks that I want her to come in here and receive love. <laughs> and so I realized I only pulled out five and I need one more. So I'm going to go back to the paper pad and pull out another. I also like to do a balance. So I have some really bold colors and then I have some that are just have white backgrounds. So I like that this last one I chose had a swatch of white on it in addition to the other colors. So I cut down the Pink Fresh Studio paper to 10 by 10. <clears throat> And I do want to have a white border. I just had this white cardstock sitting on my desk, so I wanted to use it. So I cut it into four strips, and now I'm going to rough up the edges to give it a nice textured border. And I'm going to adhere it to the pink floral um, background paper to give me nice lift and dimension off of the page. I'm also gonna rough up the edges of that paper as well. <clears throat> So just put a little strip of glue or tape and I'm going to stick down the white cardstock. And like I said, I didn't wanna cut into a whole new um, piece of white cardstock when I had a perfectly good piece sitting here that I could just cut into four strips and achieve basically the same look. So you can see here it is, um, you can't even tell that it's four separate pieces. If you can, just stop looking so hard. And I've also, um, like I said, I put white cardstock around the photos and then I've decided to also put cardstock around um, the two by two squares. And in Rebecca's original layout, all of her items were very close together, um, probably larger photos. Um, but since the two by two paper pad is only two by two, I wanted to print my photos in that size. So I just make them all a little bit bigger. You can also see she did stitching around them and I just didn't feel like stitching this day. I didn't feel like it. So to get the same kind of dimension or texture on my page, I decided to use cardstock to outline each of the little two by two swatches and rough up the edges. So that will lift them up off the page and give that texture of the distressed edges. So I did some with navy blue and some with pink. And I even added pink to the photos, which are already uh, backed in white as well. Um, so that really, I feel like made everything pop off of the page really well. I'm happy with that. So I have a die cut that says today. So I'm going to die cut some letters with my iCrafter Heather Alpha die set. And it's going to say hair today instead of hair today. <laughs> Cause I like a good pun and there's rabbits in the photo. A really creepy Easter bunny. I also have that die cut from Citrus Twist Kits. You can see over there, it's a little bunny and he's on books because the kit was um, had to do with books and reading, but um, I just like the bunny. So I'm gonna cut off the little bit that says something about reading and it becomes more of an Easter or spring die cut rather than a reading die cut. So there is the word hair. And I also cut out a little die uh, bow die because I had room and it was sitting there. But I like to add that there. Um, I, I put it over there by the bunny, but I actually add it by the title of hair today because I feel like it brings in the additional word of hair and makes it look intentional that I added another die cut underneath it. I don't know if that really makes sense, but um, you know, I want everything to look intentional and like it's meant to be there and not just haphazardly thrown on the page. 
This is a hop to celebrate Rebecca Lockhart. She's super sweet. She is very good at organizing hops and um, having good ideas for challenges. So make sure to check out the list down below. Go visit her channel, tell her congratulations, and hop along to see what other people chose to scrap lift from her. I'm just finding the center of my page to add the um, middle cube so I can add in all the others in a nice grid. I'm not a very, um, what's the word? Uh, precise person on typically, but it, in a grid like this, it is something that you might want to consider using a ruler. Like if I use a ruler, you should probably use a ruler because I basically never use a ruler. So there's that. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to stick down the I got ephemera. Don't have a lot going on because the I do like the little swatches of patterns and I want them to kind of shine. They're really cute. They're really great for two by two paper or pocket pages, like in a life crafted album. Um, so I have a lot left. I should use them up, right? So I just threw that back up there to show you that I'm kind of straying from her design now. Um, I am going to use flowers, however, which she did have on her original layout. I'm just going to place them kind of in the most pleasing manner for my layout now. Um, I used her grid design and her sewing as inspiration, but now I'm going to stray a little bit. Um, so I'm cutting off the reading portion of that die cut for the rabbit. And I like the way that looks. And it was the perfect blue color to go with the other blues in the page. I have these three larger Prima paper flowers and I'm going to pair them. <laughs> They're from 2013. I was looking to see how old they were. I'm used up that thing finally. And um, I'm going to pair them with these smaller white alphas that are like, I think, Michael's brand, which I went in Michael's the other day and it was like so pitiful. Support your local small business. Shop at a cherry on top. <laughs> I'll link that down below too. Um, I am, I want my three larger white flowers to give a very nice visual triangle. So I will put that one there by my photo of my son. And then I'm going to put the last one by the title because it gives a very strong visual triangle. And then I sprinkle the smaller ones near the large ones, as well as an additional couple little areas around the page. I like to keep things kind of like on an odd number basis that is usually very pleasing. So I also am going to use those little enamel dots right there that you can see um, as like the centers for the smaller florals because they don't have centers and the larger ones have a yellow center. So I thought that would be nice. So I'm um, I didn't have enough small ones, so I do use some of the medium sized ones, but I'm okay with it. It looks fine. Um, and I used the different colors. And this was a super brun, fun, bright, cheery spring layout. I'm ready for spring. <laughs> ready, bring it on. It's cold again today. It was warm and now it's cold. It seems to be the way things go. But I think we're done. Congrats to you, Rebecca. Thanks so much for including me in your hop. And yeah, go wish her congratulations. Here's my original, or my layout based on Rebecca's and here's her original layout coming up right there. Thanks for the inspiration. Thank you all for watching and check out the links down below. Bye y'all.